In this video, <coughs> we will start to talk about uh, chemical jasper. That is one of the most interesting group of jasper. And in our classification, chemical jasper are the only one that are uh, originated by direct pre precipitation from solution. So the three other group are a kind of pseudomorphous on fossils, wood and other kind of fossils on volcanic glass and on organogenic opal. So this is directly from fluid. And <coughs> we are uh, here we, we try to distinguish different group of chemical jasper and uh, in the first video we will talk about the more general group that is laminated jasper. For lamination is the more mm, common uh, future of chemical jasper and this a, a kind of deposition inside a, kind, a void in, in the rock uh, cavity. Another group is the Jasper Gate, that is a kind of um, group or transition between Jasper and Dagat. And uh, uh, the more popular uh, Orbit Jasper and Brechated Jasper are two uh, secondary phenomena that appear on laminated Jasper. So we will talk about these two group in different video videos when we know more or less how the laminated jasper form. Okay, uh, laminated chemical jasper are characterized by lamina. Uh, lamina uh, start to uh, deposit in cavity uh, with uh, draping the the floor of the cavity. This is the the cavity wall, the base of the cavity, this one I think, and we see that the first uh, lamination lamina are dropping the base, and in this case they make onlap. Onlap is a geological structure, structure that means that these lamina are appeared when this uh, this slope was uh, hard and this was not uh, yet uh, hard, so not loose. And mm, one by one, lamina go more and more straight line and until they uh, become uh, plant bedded. So the plant bedding is uh, a characteristic of uh, deposit uh, gra uh, driven by gravity. Uh, also, we see mm, often between lamina some crack. Uh, the crack is clearly uh, by desiccation because they are V-shaped. So uh, they uh, have the same shape as uh, in mud and uh, mm, because they, they, they recently deposited jasper, uh, lose water. And uh, another characteristic is that many nodules, many blocks of jasper have a free superior surface. So th the last lamina is free and uh, in many cases the, the cavity is not fully uh, a, a fully filled by the jasper but just is filled for an half, for part of them. This kind of jasper is the more pure group of jasper and they also are called porcelain jasper because it's uh, have no other ap apart from other mm, uh, materials uh, other than jasper. Okay, uh, we have seen lamination, but we find lamination in many cases. Mm, there was lamination in oceanic jasper and in some mm, kind of stratiform jasper, but uh, lamination always is a structure that supports a sedimentary process, but is mm, of different things. In oceanic jasper, lamination is uh, done by uh, a sedimentation of small particle of uh, uh, shells of organisms uh, made of opal. So, uh, is often mm, appear that mm, between the lamina, the irregularity of the lamina. Um, uh, leave some hair, so uh, is is uh, is common that uh, um, 
there is some in interface, some uh, space between lamina and lamina. And another lamination is found in some kind of stratiform jasper, and this is a primary lamination uh, inherited from the tuff. Uh, many of the tuff uh, are sedimented by gravity or resedimented by gravity, and uh, the lamination is a very common uh, future uh, structure of the tuff. And this kind of lamin lamina uh, often show the primary structure. Some lamina is coarser than others. Someone have a, a direct grading, so the biggest class are at the base of the lamina and the finer at the top. And in some case you can find also cross bedding. That is a indication of uh, uh, flowing uh, water above the, the sediment. So this is a, a different kind <coughs> of uh, structure inherited from the precursor of tuff, but not peculiar of the jasper. Okay. Also, we see that uh, uh, there is uh, the possibility to fill partially a cavity. We are uh, uh, used to to see full nodules, like in agate, that uh, or in amethyst geodes, when all the crystal or the chalcedony uh, is coating the wall of the cavity. In this case, it is not always uh, the jasper is not always uh, fulfilling the cavity, so it is common to find half filled or partially filled. The the lower surface have the shape of the nodule, like this mm, piece of jasper, but the upper surface is uh, flat or in some case is a um, little bit uh, uh, curved because of loss of volume uh, by loss of water. So it is often that uh, upper surface is uh, just uh, ponded. Okay, the lamination tend uh, to smooth uh, the, the irregularity of the cavity, so like in, in this piece, there was an accident at the base of the of the cavity, and the lamination start to to, uh, to cover this uh <coughs> this uh, pinnacle, this piece of rock that was inside the cavity. But uh, the lamina are thinner here than in the lower uh, part of the cavity. So uh, in few lamina, in few time, uh, so the lamina convert in flat bedding uh, and horizontal bedding. Also in this cavity we see that it's clearly filled by gravity and each lamina um, is more and more flat so the dipping is less because mm, most of the material is concentrated lower uh, toward the lower part of the cavity. And also we can see that mm, most of the, the the jasper come from the right side that probably was more porous, there was some crack or something that was uh, helping to enter the, the solution. Uh, another proof of uh, gravity in the filling process of jasper, uh, chemical jasper, is this specimen that show a fall of jasper, a cascade, and we can see that the yellow portion is here and this corresponds to this bed and they, s they fall from this deep slope and make some kind of small deposit here at the base. So in this reconstruction we can see that this set of lamina that is small in the height is more much more thicker at the base of the of the cavity until it is flattened flat bedded and, uh, uh, near the top and there is a, a fall of jasper that make this small hill here a another structure very important to this jasper is as we see uh, desiccation crack desiccation crack have a characteristic 
D Shepherd and they are uh, very well studied in mad crack but uh, never was recognized in, in Jasper as a peculiar uh, structure this this crack can interest a very thick pack of Jasper but in some cases only few lamina this uh, piece is cracked in four, three or four lamina and this is a, we have a crack for uh, crossing a bigger piece of jasper and after the crack more jasper fill the, the crack with other colors this is uh, Bruno jasper where it is not so easy to find the V-shaped crack but they are often uh, concentrated near the the, the higher portion of the of the, of the the nodule, but in some case there are small small crack in in small lamina. Here, for example, we can see that mm, crack are associated with decreasing volume. That is normal, as in Madak occur, because uh, decreasing volume is loss of water, and with loss of water material is deformed and approach from plastic deformation as in this case in this case approach a fragile deformation that uh, allow the piece to to make a crack here so this is this was the uh, level reached by by jasper and this is the the portion of the jasper that is lost by volume decreasing so all this portion of this at this time is loss of water then another portion uh, another uh, feeling of jasper of very strongly black black color fill the, the pond um, also uh, proof of desiccation is the presence of small breccia Breccia is uh, a fragmented cluster that uh, show uh, clearly um, the structure of the lamina. So the lamina are desiccated and crack uh, by loss of water. But uh, mm, for to be resedimented, it is necessary to uh, to think to imagine that uh, some. Uh, uh, some transport are uh, occurred inside the cavity so more water enter in the cavity when mm, the, the first the last uh, laminas was dried and broken and th th this water uh, remove and transport this fragmented lamina and uh, redeposited like a slump breccia that is a concentration of small class of uh, jasper in this specimen we can see two slump breccia, one here and one here, but also we can see a small breccia, many, many small breccia at different level, here, 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 and uh, probably uh, with mm, better detail we can say that each lamina is associated with a, a desiccation event. So uh, we can imagine from the study of this specimen that uh, lamina is a seasonal event so uh, it's associated with uh, water, the, with the rainy season, and uh, is uh, brecciation, uh, fracturation, and desiccation is associated with a dry season. So the al alternance of dry season and wet season is uh, running the fulfilling of the of the cavity. Another <coughs> typical uh, structure of uh, chemical jasper is uh, plastic deformation. This structure is more typical of the Willow Creek Jasper that is uh, uh, deposited, as we see in the last chapter about Tandrek, is deposited in very big Tandrek of few meters of diameter. So the deposit uh, uh, mm, a huge load of Jasper, and uh, as we can see, this is probably 40 50 centimeters, but there is specimen that uh, reach one meter of jasper inside the cavity so this is a lot of 
load charging on on the lower uh, on the point of the jasper and uh, the formation occur when there is a reverse uh, gravity gradient that means that um, the upper portion of the of the jasper is drying and when dry lose water and become become more uh, heavy mm, so the, it have uh, higher uh, density so the lower part uh, is trapped with water so the density of this jasper is lighter than the upper portion so the lower is more plastic and this is more rigid so the the load of this portion push down and the lower jasper uh, push up so uh, lower jasper make a kind of flame tower the the uh, toward the top and the, the up the more dense uh, material make lobe going down downward also in this specimen we can see lobe going toward the base and flame pushing up toward the top of the specimen okay um, this is a resume of the kind of cavity so we see that uh, Tandereg is a typical cavity filled uh, in some case by Jasper, like Bruno Jasper, Willow Creek Jasper, and many more others. But also fissure, like uh, Morrisonite, is uh, the filling of uh, fissure fracture in the, in the, in the Ostrog. Half nodule, as we see, is the, the filling of mm, cavity. In many cases, big cavity, there have no time to be completely filled by Jasper also amygdalas that are cavity in basalt like the cavity of um, common agate that are um, typically uh, oval shaped and with inclined uh, in respect to the lava flow and also there is a true nodule so true nodule is made by uh, fluid migration so in the area where there is a lot of jasper migrating in in the in the deposit, uh, beside other kind of cavity filling, uh, cavity filled by jasper, there is the possibility to concentrate the true nodule by moving uh, fluid to uh, in concretion. So uh, the true nodules are typically associated to the other kind of jasper. So there is in some case true nodule near cavity filling or near fissure in some part of the deposit. This is uh, the best structure, uh, the most known structure of chemical jasper, that is orbs. We, we have to distinguish uh, orbs by orbicular, it's nothing to do, it's a different phenomenon. So this is like a circular uh, geometry uh, repeated inside the, the jasper. This is a phenomenon that is late after the deposition of the jasper and usually um, obliterates, uh, erase the primary structure of lam laminar jasper. In this case we can see a Bruno jasper with lamination and this is completely erased by this color due to orbs. Also in this blue mountain we can see a very nice uh, desiccation crack, but orbs are erasing this pattern and, and are above uh, the, the cracking. So the, the formation of orbs is late after the, the cavity is, co is just filled by Jasper. A another structure is uh, uh, a kind of fracture that is not uh, like the V-shaped uh, fracture, but it's more uh, long fracture, and usually they are vertical or almost vertical and um, parallel each other. So this is a fracture of Morrisonite with many uh, well, a fracture filling of Morrisonite with Jasper, and many fracture cross the the bed of Jasper uh, in. Uh, quite vertical uh, direction. 
and in this case the fracture start from v-shaped fracture so start from the free surface of the jasper like in this case in this case in this case in this case but then the fracture migrate until the the cavity wall so the, uh, the migration make the, the, the fracture to curve a little bit but they go from the up to down so this uh, fracture are due to load in Willow Creek we see that load is due to the, the, the load of Jasper itself and this appear uh, when the Jasper is a little bit hard in respect uh, when it's more soft uh, the, the, the formation the load uh, provoke a convolution uh, it's responsible to make a plastic deformation deformation like flame and lobe we see before but when the jasper is more hard uh, the, the load uh, is uh, responsible to a fragile deformation so the formation of fracture in the case of morrisonite because uh, the jasper is in fracture inside the rock is the the load of the, the mountain the load of the modern the rock that is responsible to, to this fracture pattern this is uh, imperial jasper that is also in very big uh, uh, nodules and we see also in this case the fracture be mm, start from the free surface and go until the base and the, the fracture are uh, more or less um, vertical and cross also the, the, the orbs so it's a very late phenomenon uh, also in this, uh, this cabochon that is uh, a kind of imperial jasper that was very popular because of this pattern. Uh, in this uh, Willow Creek, uh, we see that the fractures that are more or less parallel are um, open. Uh, so there is not only a fracture, but a wide fracture with uh, some jasper inside. So uh, there is a process that opens the fracture, and after uh, a jasper with the color of the more late jasper that is the green that is outside here uh, it's not the pink or the dark uh, brown but it's the green so it's a late uh, late color and this uh, this fracture is opened and become larger uh, because uh, there is not a, an, an explanation there is not the possibility to have uh, a decrease in volume when when the jasper is just uh, is just hard and uh, there is not uh, the possibility uh, to to have desiccation because we see that desiccation is v-shaped and is not until the base so um, we think that uh, the free space the opening of the fracture is due to dissolution but we will see th this uh, this problem, the, the dissolution of Jasper in the next chapter. Okay, I in some cases we see that the fractures are so wide and filled by a new Jasper that they have a new uh, uh, group of orbs uh, with different color and different shape respe respect to the first. We see this fracture, this fracture, this fracture they have a pattern like uh, quite different and uh, uh, the last uh, uh, phenomena in the laminated uh, jasper is the presence of stalactite uh, stalactite are mm, uh, rarely found in the, uh, complete but uh, its remain uh, can stay inside the, the laminated jasper crossing the lamina in vertical position so we know that lamina is horizontal this is vertical all the stalactite are parallel each other and uh, mm, modify the, uh, the shape of the lamina so we can see in very common in imperial jasper to find this kind of stalactite that cross the lamina and here also they cross all the structure the lamina the bulbs also and the formation of this stalactite is uh, 
contemporary to the the position of the of the lamina like in this case you will see a very long stalactite that uh, stop uh, the the position of lamina that come from the left and the right side have a different level so the the flowing of the lamina uh, going this direction uh, was stopped so this means that <coughs> la, uh, the stalactite um, is a dropping of jasper so uh, is a moment when mm, the jasper don't deposit directly in lamina but was sticked on the cavity wall so in this case we we have two very rare uh, sample and where uh, the, the stalactite are, are preserved so we see the stalactite in the top and this uh, fossil remain between lamina uh, the the stalactites are covered by quartz in this case and chalcedony here uh, but we see inside they are made stalactite are made of jasper and and its uh, formation is simultaneous of the formation of lamina in this other case case is more a kind of of moss but we see that in some area moss uh, is very similar to jasper so usually this part of the nodule will broke and only this half nodule mm, is uh, digged by rock counting but in this uh, very rare uh, piece we we can see the, the the real origin of stalactite so with these two sample we enter in the world of jasper gate because um, is a, a moment where uh, Jasper not only make lamina directly from from the from the solution, but uh, some kind uh, some part of the Jasper stick on the on the cavity floor on the cavity uh, wall, uh, stick all around and uh, drip down. And this is a characteristic typical of chalcedony this is important so chalcedony is uh, sticking all around the cavity while uh, jasper never jasper always make a flat lamination okay this is uh, a resume of the origin of a chemical jasper we have uh, the cavity filled uh, with the colloidal solution with uh, the formation of lamina this is in the wet season in the dry season the lamina dry up and make a crack of desiccation and loss of volume the repetition of this event make the filling of the nodule that can be complete or just partial. Uh, secondary phenomena are uh, uh, are plastic deformation uh, with flame and load, are deformation of orbs and uh, the crack. Uh, so, <coughs> for recognize a chemical jasper. Uh, we, we need to have uh, information about that the jasper is filling of a cavity the orbit pa pattern if it's present is a clear uh, proof that is a chemical jasper usually they are very pure and with shining colors uh, the lamination is always flat and very uh, tough uh, w without uh, uh, hair between the lamina and uh, also we can have a, a nodular uh, jasper with true nodule that have uh, all the 